even elite athletes are still not replenishing their glycogen optimally. Glycogen replenishment happens in two phases. It's gonna be the main limiting factor for how quickly you're gonna recover everything. Here's what they found with what they were eating. They're getting 5.2, they need at least six to maybe 12. They're getting about half of what they need. Now this is interesting because they're not losing weight. So if they're getting not enough carbohydrates, where's their calories coming from? Normally when we're talking about nutrition, we're talking about eat this thing for a reason, to improve performance, to improve recovery, and there's lots to that. But this one's a little bit different. So today we are talking about your glycogen stores. Glycogen stores are your fuel reserve that you use for high intensity effort. So in a marathon, if you've ever hit the wall, I know I have, if you've ever run a marathon, you've probably hit the wall, you run out of glycogen and therefore you have to shift from burning stored sugar, which is glycogen, and you have to shift to burning more fat. And when you do that, it takes much more oxygen. And so you have, you can breathe four times faster if you can, but you can't. So you slow way down because you need more time to metabolize the fat and turn it into energy. So we need a lot of glycogen if we want to run fast. Now, if you're going to be running, my last race was a 300 miler. I'm still recovering. My foot still hurts from it three months later almost. And uh, you're burning a lot of fat for that. You're going just so slow. And if you're running a race that is less than 90 minutes, so a 5K, a 10K, you're not likely to run out of glycogen. So it doesn't really matter. You have enough glycogen as long as you've been eating. But when you get into that half marathon to marathon to 50K, when you get into that range, glycogen is a big deal. And if you run out of it, you are going to hit the wall. So we don't want that. So we want to go into a race with the most amount of glycogen stored that we can. That's kind of point number one. Point number two is when you do a workout or a long run or a race and you've taken your glycogen levels and you've knocked them way down, you really want to replenish them as quickly and fully as you can for a number of reasons. The first one is that in order to do your next workout, you're going to need that glycogen back. Otherwise, you just keep being in a deficit more and more and more and more of a deficit. And that could lead to things like chronic fatigue syndrome. But even more than that, if we're not even looking out just to the next training day, if we're looking at just what happens from the training run that you did where you knocked your glycogen down, you still want to replenish it quickly because it's gonna be the main limiting factor for how quickly you're gonna recover everything. Your body needs to restore that glycogen and so it's going to prioritize doing this. If you have low glycogen stores, you may compromise your immune system. So have you ever run a long race? Maybe you train and then you run your peak marathon and then a couple days after your peak marathon, you get sick? Have you ever had that before? Or after an ultra marathon, have you ever got sick? Sometimes it happens. And one of the reasons for that is because you ran really low on glycogen and then you couldn't replenish it quickly enough. It compromises your immune system. Before I tell you what to do, because it's actually pretty simple. You probably already know. We're just going to fine tune it. Because I learned something about glycogen replenishment that I didn't know. And I read a couple of cool research papers. So there's two pieces of research. I'm going to go just for the sake of time, instead of reading verbatim, I'm going to try to paraphrase for you. So I'm going to go to the draft of the Run Elite Nutrition book, which I'm working on right now. All right. So I'm going to give some links in the notes that you can look at after. But this one is from Mullins. It's important that we're looking at elite runners here, elite athletes, because if we just look at 19 people, it's a pretty small study, but if we look at 19 people who are professional and this is what they do and they're towards the top of the world, they're really good, uh, we can learn a little bit more. So they looked at 19 female heptathletes and here's what they found with what they were eating. They found that the amount of carbohydrate that they're taking in throughout a day during their peak training averaged to about 5.2 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight per day. All right. And in order to replenish their glycogen, they would have needed to get six to 12 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day. So they're getting 5.2. They need at least six to maybe 12. They're getting about half of what they need. Now, this is interesting because they're not losing weight. So they're getting enough calories, but they're not getting enough glucose to turn into glycogen, but they're getting enough calories. So by definition, they're getting more fat and more protein because assuming they're not drinking a whole bunch of alcohol, calories are only coming from carbohydrates, fat, and protein, and alcohol. But we're going to exclude alcohol for now and assume they're not binge drinking for their calories as an elite athlete. So if they're getting not enough carbohydrates, where's their calories coming from? Fat and protein. And guess what? There aren't many high protein foods out there. We're told to eat high protein this and high protein that. Eh. It's higher protein than something else, perhaps. But when we look at a high protein food, think of like a meat or a high protein dairy product or something. It's mostly fat, not mostly protein in most cases. So they're eating mostly fat. They're eating too much fat, 
too much fat. Everybody in the westernized world, almost everybody, let's not completely put a blanket statement here, but virtually everybody is eating a large percentage of the calories from fat. The average percentage of calories from fat that an American has is quite high. And I know I'm not eating that much. That means somebody out there is eating a lot more. All right, professional heptathletes not getting enough carbohydrate to replenish glycogen levels. Study number two was done on 66 athletes. This is the research done by Devlin which you can see in the notes after. 66 athletes that are sub-elite, so they're not novice, they're pretty good, but they're not the best in the world. Sub-elite soccer and Australian football players. And they found that they were taking in a range of even lower, 2.9 to 4.6 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day. Just remember 2.9 to 4.6. Uh, and they looked at English soccer players, on and on and on. They just went through a whole bunch of athletes, but it was too low. Now, what they found was that for athletes who aren't endurance athletes, they're gonna be okay. It may not be ideal, but their body, even if they ate more fat and they didn't consume enough carbohydrates to replenish their glycogen, they're gonna create more glucose from the other foods they're eating. You just need to give time. So if you're not an endurance athlete, it's not the end of the world. It's not ideal, but if you are an endurance athlete, it's a problem. So. Here is how to do it. For years, I've been doing ice. You're gonna have to make the ice, and it's a lot of ice, especially in the summer. Good luck. It was never enough ice. I don't wanna have to deal with all the ice anymore, so I got an actual cold plunge that has a chiller. It's gonna save you a bunch of headache. It's gonna be way cleaner. It's gonna be way more consistent. It's gonna be colder. I can just get in this thing. And this guy, he can live outside. It's actually rained every single day, and no problem, it just runs and it keeps it clean. If you're going to do cold plunges, just invest and get an actual cold plunge. So I do like this brand, Zenshuri. I've had this for about a month or so and I've had no problems. This chiller is just running all the time. If you want to get this system here, you can use the link below and it'll give you a $50 off. So here is how to do it. I hope you already understand that even elite athletes are still not replenishing their glycogen optimally. That's not to say everyone isn't, but many of them aren't. So here's how you do it. Now, I didn't know this until I read the research by Murray here. Or maybe I forgot from sports medicine school. I don't know. But glycogen replenishment happens in two phases. Now, I actually did know this just in a different way, because if you recall in the Running Elite book, we talk about when you finish a run, 36 hours, 24 to 36 hours before your marathon, we do a little hack. We do this to maximize your glycogen stores. And I want you to go out and just run nice and easy and then jack up the intensity a little tiny bit and then come back and immediately eat and then continue to eat until you shut it off and go to bed. We're trying to just top off your glycogen stores. Now, it's true that right after a workout, you're gonna replenish glycogen stores further. Let's look at this, listen carefully. Phase one and phase two of replenishing glycogen. Phase number one, we're gonna call this, I'm just making up this term, we're gonna call this the rapid replenishment phase. And it happens within about 30, within, not at 30 or 40 minutes after, but within 30 to 40 minutes of completing a run that deplenishes some of your glycogen, or a lot of it even, within that time, which is pretty short, you're going to be able to reuptake and form glycogen really quickly. The numbers are 12 to 30 millimoles of glycogen per hour. You don't have to know what any of that means, but we are putting a number on it so that we can compare it to what happens long-term. 12 to 30 millimoles. Now, after the 40 minutes is done, arguably through about two hours, it starts to taper off through about two hours. And then after that, we start to get into long-term glycogen storage. Your body still wants to store glycogen, but it's maybe not necessarily trying to grab it and make it life or death because you just burned through all of it. You're a little bit more chilling. You can metabolize some fat. You can keep eating. Maybe you have other priorities. Like maybe your body has other survival priorities hours after you've worked out. Phase two, we're going to call this the slow resynthesis. And you're only going to uptake about two to three millimoles of glycogen per hour. Okay, phase one, 12 to 30, let's just call it 20, okay, on average. Phase two, two to three, one-tenth. So we're gonna make two key points here for you. Number one is that you want to consume if you lowered your glycogen levels. Now, if you went out for like a short shakeout run, it's not the end of the world. But if you plan on running again the next day and again the next day, now also if you're gonna run every other day, 
it's not the end of the world. But if you're gonna train most days and if your volume is starting to get 60, 90, 120 minutes per day or more, you have to do this or you're gonna be in trouble. As soon as you're done with your run, you have a window of about 30 to 40 minutes, maybe up to about two hours where you want to eat. Now here's what the researchers said were the optimal foods, high glycemic carbohydrates like potatoes and bread. I'm not telling you that, don't shoot the messenger here. I don't think you should eat all bread <laughs> to replenish your uh, glycogen. That's just what they used in the research and it worked quite well. Potatoes, bread. Okay, and they said to do this for every 30 minutes. So right when you're done with your running pretty soon after, and then every 30 minutes for about two to four hours. Then we're gonna move into the long-term storage. And what the researchers found was most effective was easier to digest, more simple carbohydrates. So they said three foods, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Not the mess, I'm the messenger here telling you what they said. I don't ideally recommend eating whole grains for your, all of your fuel, but heck, it's better than, you know, bacon or something like that for sure, 100%. It's not like it's bad, but it's not like the ideal thing. So researchers are saying, right away, you're gonna eat high glycemic carbohydrates, potatoes, bread, and then for the rest of the day and the days which follow, fruits and vegetables and whole grains. And that's it, if you wanna restore your glycogen. I did the math on myself based off of, I weigh about 140 pounds. Now recall that most, even elite heptathletes, they're not getting enough carbohydrates. They're getting enough calories. That tells me that they're not eating ideal foods for their performance. So what do the researchers actually recommend? They recommend that it's eight to 12 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight per day. So I did the math on myself. I weigh 140 pounds. That's about 63 kilos. And I'm actually rounding down to make this a little bit more conservative. Okay. That would be 756 grams of carbohydrates per day. There's four calories per gram. That's over 3000 calories from carbohydrates per day. That's the majority of my calories. I eat a little bit more, especially in high training. I might eat, I mean, geez, if it's a, like an ultra day, I mean, the, the number may be way up there, but you know, on an average day for a multi-month period during high training, it's going to be, I don't know, three or four, maybe 5,000 calories on like bigger days, three or four. Cause on a sedentary day, it's like 2,500. That's most of the calories. Okay. So I want you to hear this. That's the vast majority of calories. 80, 10, 10 is 80% of your calories from carbohydrate, 10 from fat, 10 from protein, roughly. Most of them coming from carbohydrate. So guess what? If you're gonna have someone who weighs 140 pounds, if I need 3000 calories from carbohydrate, that's most of my calories. What percentage? Probably about 80%. So what foods are 80% carbohydrate? It's fruits and vegetables with a little bit of maybe starches. Now, another advantage to the fruits and vegetables is you also get the hydration. Dehydrated cooked food plus water is inferior to food which contains the water. And if you want to learn more about how to maximize your hydration through your food instead of drinking, it is far better, far more effective to do it with your food, then make sure that you're subscribed because I have a video coming up on exactly that topic. Now, if you liked this video here on how to store more glycogen, that's just one of the sections in the Run Elite book. I highly suggest picking up a copy of this. And that particular section is on the special hacks section towards the back of the book for what to do on race day and leading up to race day. I know that you're going to love it. Now, a couple of short announcements for you here. I just got done presenting at a festival in Michigan that was on nutrition. And I was there as a nutrition speaker for ultra runners. And I'll have a video coming up on that too, because I actually got to record my speech there. And it was really good. I know that you're going to love it. So another reason to stay safe to the channel, but I've got some other things coming up as well. Now I've actually been asked by the United States Marines to train them in September on how to structure their training for a peak in performance to get better as runners. And I'm going to be talking about nutrition and mindset as well as structuring training with them. This is going to be a private training that I'm going to do with them, but I asked for permission to record it and they said, yes, I can. So in the coming months afterward, I'm going to be publishing that as well. It's going to be really awesome. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming up with Run Elite. So thank you so much for watching, for being a member here, for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much.